Let us show what a commercial sized plant will look like. This is the core conversion process, the fluid bed gasifier closely coupled to the plasma converter. The hot syngas that is produced in the gas plasma process is then cooled. Before being cleaned of residue and acid gas vapors, the clean and cool syngas is then transferred into short term buffer storage before being pumped into the gas engines. Now for a more detailed tour of the plant. Starting in the control room, we move down to the factory floor. From cold, the gasifier system needs to be brought up to its operating temperature. This is accomplished using an air preheater that consists of a natural gas burner and high pressure fan. Air is heated by the gas burner and blown into the base of the gasifier, raising its temperature to approximately 700 degrees Celsius. At this point, the feedstock is gradually introduced until the process becomes self supporting. The gas burner input is then reduced before being finally switched off. We're now looking at the conveyor and feed hopper that delivers the feedstock to the fluid bed gasifier. The fluid bed gasifier processes refuse-derived fuel and pretreated commercial and municipal wastes. To give you a sense of scale, the gasifier is approximately 9 meters high and has an internal diameter of around 3 meters. In normal operation, the gasifier's sand bed is fluidized by steam and oxygen that's injected through nozzles at the base of the bed so as to maintain a starved air atmosphere inside the gasifier. Refuse derived fuel or RDF feedstock is fed into the gasifier slightly above the bed and is quickly converted into a syngas that leaves from the top of the gasifier. A small percentage of the input material that's a mixture of ash and char is removed from the base of the bed and transferred to the plasma converter. The plasma converter is a refractory line chamber with the carbon electrode and electrode control equipment mounted at the center of the chamber roof. On entry into the plasma converter, the syngas is forced to swirl around the chamber, allowing the maximum amount of time for the gas to be exposed to the high temperatures and intense ultraviolet light of the electrode arc, before exiting through a refractory line duct for further processing. The ash and chars are also treated in the plasma converter, becoming a molten product which is continually removed, cooled and processed into a recyclable aggregate. Now we're going round the back of the plasma converter to view the electrode manipulation area. The plasma converter has a single 250 mm diameter solid carbon electrode that's held in position by the manipulator which moves the electrode up and down through the roof of the plasma converter as part of the arc control system. The manipulator clamps on to the live electrode, allowing power to be transferred to it from the power supply system. As the system operates as a continuous 24-hour, 7-day process, additional electrodes need to be attached without interruption. An electrode jointer is used to screw one meter long new electrodes onto the live electrode while the system remains in operation. Now let's take a look outside. The hot syngas exits from the plasma converter at approximately 1200 degrees Celsius and is then cooled in a water tube heat exchanger to reduce the gas temperature to 200 degrees Celsius. During this process, energy is recovered in the form of low pressure steam and a proportion of the steam is used in the gasification process.
The syngas flows to the particulate filter, where a reacting agent is metered into the gas stream to enable capture of sulfur-based compounds. The reacted powder coats the filter and traps contaminated dust, allowing the gas to pass through. The syngas then passes through a vertical packed tower that has a strongly alkaline solution. The acidic components react and are neutralized in the solution, leaving a cooled, clean fuel gas suitable for using in a gas engine. While the syngas is now ready to be fed into the gas engines, a small proportion is diverted and compressed at high pressure to provide buffer storage capacity. This storage facility compensates for fluctuations in the demand from the gas engines. The syngas flows into the engines at a constant pressure, with the required rate matched to demand. The engines generate power at 11,000 volts. The power is routed to the internal distribution system, with the surplus power sold on to the national grid. While not shown here, each gas engine will be housed in its own enclosure, which will have both acoustic control and fire suppression systems built in to provide a secure environment for each generating set. Energy is recovered from the engine exhausts and is converted to steam. This steam is combined with the steam produced from the syngas cooling system and is used either to provide additional power generation or for export as process steam or hot water, for example to a district heating system. Finally, engine exhausts are combined into a single low-impact stack for discharge, with the final engine exhaust meeting all European and national emission standards.